Welcome back to new session. This is your trainer, mentor and PMP coach Anand. In this session, you will go through the overview of project scope management knowledge area. This is important knowledge area for a project manager as it helps project manager to build clear understanding of the project scope and put boundaries around it. As you know, it is very difficult to manage a project without clear scope. Learning objective of this session are, we'll start with the scope definition. We'll go through what is difference between product scope and project scope. We'll go through the key concept, trends and emerging practices, process tailoring consideration. Of course, the scope management process definition. We'll also look at overview of uh, all six processes under this knowledge area and quick review. Managing scope is one of the key challenge for project manager. Project foundation depends on how clear your project requirements are. Project management and meeting customer expectations become extremely difficult when scope is not clearly defined or customer fail to explain what they wanted or project team fail to clearly document customer requirements. I'm sure you might have come across this scenario. So customer want to build a swing. This is how customer explained his requirements. This is how project team designed it as per a process. Team reviewed design with the customer, but customer may have signed the design without clearly understanding you are reviewing it. And after the product is developed during the final customer review, customer might have explained what they really needed. Now this is where scope management knowledge area help project manager. It helps in properly planning the scope activities, collecting requirements from authorized and responsible stakeholders, getting agreement or approval from concerned stakeholder, and finally ensuring what was agreed is delivered through the project, nothing less, nothing more. Let's go through the scope definition. Scope is sum of the product, services and result to be provided as an outcome of the project. Some project may have all three elements or some may have only one or two of them. For example, call center upgrade project may deliver product as improved call center software and service that is improved call center service. Lot of time there is a confusion between product and project scope. Let's try to understand them. Product scope includes features and function that characterizes a product or service. They are generally referred as a product requirement documents or product specification document. Project scope is the work performed to deliver that product or service with the specified features and function as per product scope. They are referred as Project Scope Statement, WBS, and WBS Dictionary. Of course, we'll talk about this going forward. Product Scope addresses the question, what? What customer wants? It refers to functional requirements of a product or service. That means features and function that characterizes a product or service. Project Scope addresses the question, how? How work will be delivered, it's a, it is delivery oriented. It helps you as a PM to identify and document the activities or work that need to be done to deliver the product or scope. Remember, product scope is a part of a project scope. Let's go through some of the key concepts. Scope management is done differently in predictive and adaptive project. In predictive life cycle, where you collect requirements, define scope and create work breakdown structure. Now all are done once and later only in case of a changes. Validate scope is done for each deliverable R phase and review and control scope is ongoing process. Whereas scoping is different in agile projects. Initially product scope is developed as a vision. Yeah, initially, product vision is developed. 
product backlog which is the list of high level product requirements that will be developed based upon the product vision. Then this high level priority items from the product backlogs are added to uh, iteration. Yeah, sometimes you call it as a sprint. And in each iteration, processes includes again collect requirement, define scope and create WBS, validate scope, control scope. Remember, as per PMI, scope management processes are followed in both approaches. However, how they are applied is different. In Agile lifecycle, product scope is documented in the form of product backlog. What is product backlog? It is a list of high level requirement or characteristics of a product. The top ranked requirements, your top ranked items from the product backlog are selected for a sprint and added to the sprint backlog. During the sprint planning session, this requirement are further elaborated in the form of user stories. Of course, we'll talk about this whole concept of product backlog, sprint backlog uh, going forward in some other session. Now, what are the new trends and emerging practices in scope management? According to one of the report, 19% of project fails. And I'm sure you might have come across the situation where towards the end customer says, oh, this is not what I requested. What did you deliver? How do we deal with this situation? Now, this is where the concept of needs assessment and business analysis helps you. Now, what is needs assessment? Needs assessment is a pre-project activity, which is done as a part of a program or portfolio planning. This helps in understanding the business problem and establishing the business need and get agreement with the top management or key stakeholder. Proper needs assessment will ensure project stays focused on original needs, uh, why the project was initiated and deliver intended benefit. The role of a business analyst is becoming very critical. And that is one of the success a factor for a project. With the new technologies and ever-growing needs of improving and automating processes, BA has a key role to play. BA will focus on the requirements related activities like requirement elicitation and documentation, etc. Project manager will plan the work. He will plan schedule, cost, and so on. Now, this needs a collaborative partnership. So collaborative partnership between business analysts and project manager is very important in bringing stakeholder on board and getting agreement with them. So once you have all stakeholder and proper agreement on the requirement, executing project is a cakewalk. Process tailoring considerations. Some of the key area which will lead to process tailoring are development approach. Project manager will define the development approach in the project management plan. It might be predictive, iterative, incremental, agile, or hybrid. Stability of requirement. Approach will be defined based upon the stability of requirement. Project manager will choose lean or agile approach if requirements are unstable. Knowledge management. If a project is repeat project where organization has already executed similar project in the past, then knowledge and requirement management will help project manager with related systems and their possible reuse. Validation and control procedures. There will be different validation and control procedures based upon selected project approach. Example, business acceptance process will be tailored based upon waterfall or agile approach, which is chosen for the project. Governance. Governance mechanism like audit policies may lead to tailoring some of the processes. For example, in government project, governance might be very strict and 100% adherence to a policies might be mandatory. Again, what are the considerations for agile and adaptive environment. Mostly agile projects will have unclear scope at the beginning. Sometime 
business don't know product requirement. They might say, we want to develop best TV in the market. But what do you mean by that best TV? So project team may build prototype and develop product understanding in this process. Agile cycles referred as a sprint will be executed to refine the product until it meets customer's requirement. Scope is defined and redefined throughout the project life cycle. Agile teams spend less time, remember agile team, so they spend less time to define and agree on the scope at the beginning. However, they will spend a lot more time uh, as ongoing activity as a part of a discovery and refinement of the scope. Again, that's a part of your sprint here yeah, iteration. Let's look at scope management definition. Scope management ensures that project include all the work required and only work required to complete the project successfully. For example, always assume you have to determine all requirement as a part of project. And finally, let's have a quick look at scope management knowledge area processes. It has total six processes. First four processes are in planning uh, pro process group and last two processes are part of monitoring and controlling project work process group. So let's start with first one. Plan scope management is the process of creating a scope management plan that define how scope will be defined, validated and controlled. Next, collect requirement. It is the process of determining, documenting and managing stakeholder needs and requirement to meet the project objective. So this is where you develop or create the business requirements document. Uh, in software, we call, this a, call it as a BRS, your reporting requirement documents. Defined scope. Now this is the process of developing a detailed description of a project and product. Again, now this is where the scope management, uh, a project scope statement get created. However, please note that project scope statement is not a final scope baseline as per PMI. Next process, it is create work breakdown structure. Now WBS, this is the process of finalizing the scope baseline. So don't go with the name. We will, of course, talk about WBS and, you know, what is that, yeah, how to create it. But output of create WBS is a scope baseline. Next is validate scope. This is a business acceptance process. This is where you formalize the acceptance of completed project deliverable from business. You get their signatures. Control scope. This is the process of monitoring the scope status and managing changes to the scope baseline. Again, as you know, scope is not going to be same what you get in the beginning. So how to manage, how to control that? So that will be part of control scope process. Great job. We have completed the overview of project scope management process, yeah, project scope management knowledge area. Let's do a quick review about the topic covered in this session. So we started with the scope definition. We uh, differentiated between the project and product scope. We also understand product scope is a part of a project scope. We gone through some of the key concept, trends and emerging practices, process tailoring consideration, considerations for agile, uh, and we learn about project scope management definition and had a very brief overview of all six scope management processes. Keep learning. See you in next session. That is plan scope management, which is the first process in scope management knowledge area.